Now to let you know, Professor Kishore Kumar Basa sir is chairing the session. With your permission sir, I would like to take it forward. Thank you. For the next address, I would invite Director I am Sambalpur Odesa, Professor Mahadeva Prasad Jaiswal, please. Good morning everyone and I convey my thanks to Argus uh, Media for organizing this Argus Education Next 2022 and special guest Professor Kishore Kumar Basha, Professor Srikant Mahapatra, Dr. Umakan Das, Mrs. Sanjay Jena, Distinguished guest media, ladies and gentlemen, and dear students. As we all know, that Government of India has come out with new education policy, NEP 2.0, which is a historical document and which talks about multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary education and also talk about creating some top university from India. In this context, we have to analyze what changes are coming in the society. I could visualize there are three major disruptions which we are undergoing through and I call it 3D disruption. The first disruption is due to digitalizations. Digitalization is disrupting everything. We have seen during pandemic, every industry including education and health services could save because of digitalizations. And dig digitalization is making disruptive change all across. Whether we like or not, we will have to accept that what are the new methods, new mode, and new market which digitalization is creating and we must grab that opportunity. And fortunately, India is world number one in providing digital services for many years. So that's a great opportunity for Indian education system as well and also for Indian business. The second the disruptions which is called disruptions due to decarbonization. Sustainability is becoming the focus. The way our society has progressed in business, it has created huge amount of challenges to social development. There are environmental challenges, there is disparity, and we have seen the global warming, many challenges which are coming, and that, that's how the global society, including India, has decided to get into how to reduce the carbon footprint across our industry and across our systems. And we will see that next 20 to 30 years, major industry which exists today will not exist. The coal industry will be closed, oil and gas industry will be closed, automobile industry will completely disrupt and only electrical vehicles and which runs on renewable energy only they will survive. So those kind of disruptions which is coming, we must be prepared and our education system must geared towards creating a sustainable society. So that second disruption that is called disruption due to decarbonation is another challenge, another opportunity as well for a country like us. The third disruption which is much more powerful than the first two and that is called democratization of business. You must have seen the way the startup systems are coming into business. The future lies with the innovation-based startups. The large companies will get disrupted. We will not hear the large company. Today we know only large companies. They may not be able to compete with the startups. And you must be happy that India is again number three ecosystem in the startup world. US, China and number three is India. So democratization of business means every industry, including education, will get into democratization means every person will be the owner of business. And we have seen in 
taxi services, whether we have seen in digital payment, we have seen in housing, real estate, OYO, all these industries are actually owned by almost every person of the country and every person of the society. So this kind of changes which are happening, how is our education system geared towards that? Will continue to teach the way we have been teaching in class? I would say that the teaching will be dis completely disrupted. The teaching will be shift to learning. And the moment we shift teaching to learning, the role of student becomes the focus, not the professors. The student will learn themselves using digital technologies. They will grab the contents wherever it is available across the world, across the institutions. No need to come to the class to learn. No need to come to the class to learn something which is already learned. So what for the, they will come to the class? They will come to the class to create content, not disseminate content. And that is where the learning will become research inside the class. Today's education, research happened in the library on lab and teaching happened in the class and then we go and use in industry. All three are disintegrated. In the coming time, these three will get integrated. Industry will come to the class with their problem statement. A student will come to solve that problems and professor will have to provide the research model that how the problem to be solved and create new contents. This is the kind of change which we can visualize in coming educations. And if Indian institutions, some of Indian institutions take lead in this, creating the new age of education, that is the focus of this conclave, that what is next, the new age of education is that every class, starting from primary school to PhD class, focus will be create content, create new knowledge, and we know India is already number one in terms of young population in the world. We are number three in startup ecosystem in the world. We are sixth in the economic system in the world. I am sure if this model initiate in Indian institutions, the glory of India will be back. The Nalanda and Takshila will be back. And that should be the vision of our education. And that is the vision of NEP 2020 which Government of India and Modi government has brought. I think it is the responsibility of all the educationists in this country, including vice chancellor, directors, and students and professors, and also social organizations, to come and create disruptions. And let's lead the nations through education. We have seen whole world, only those countries are the number one, where educational systems are number one. I think India has a future because we have the highest percentage of the young populations and we are also, if you see India as a demography, India is one of the most beautiful countries in the world in terms of natural beauty. We are best in the richest in the world in terms of natural resource, including Odisha, and we are best in terms of intellectual resource. We are only lacking in terms of synchronizing all of this because education systems, what Macaulay taught us, has been ruining this country for years. I think time has come when we have to reform and Government of India has already started reforms, come forward, initiate the process of reform, disruptions and, and lead the world. That is what I would like to just say in my uh, opening remarks. Thank you very much again to Dargas for inviting me for this. Thank you.